Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna show you how we made a walking cane for my mom. Um, I decided to make it out of walnut, zebra wood, and purple heart. I'm actually gonna be making two uh, walking canes. One of them is gonna be zebra wood and with a combination of purple heart and uh, walnut. And the other one, it's gonna be more walnut than uh, anything else. First of all, I wanted to prepare everything that I'm gonna be gluing up, the long pieces for the stick and the handle. So at this point in my career, I don't have a bandsaw. So I'm just gonna resaw this piece of purple heart on my table saw. It's not as hard as it seems. Uh, one side do one side, I'll do the other side, and then I'll send it through the planer to make sure I have very flat pieces. Now this purple heart I'm gonna be using for the handle. So I need thin pieces. Uh, sending them through the planer actually helps me get them as, as thin and flat as, a, as I possibly need them. I just went very slowly, uh, sending, uh, sending them over and over through the planer and lowering just a tiny bit each time until I have the desired thickness. Okay, so I decided I'm gonna do one for the stick itself out of zebra wood and the other one out of walnut. This one's gonna have a handle walnut with purple heart in the middle. And the other one's gonna have a handle of purple heart with zebra wood in the middle. So I think it's gonna look good. And with that in mind, it was time to glue up the pieces for the stick. Now, I'm sure you know how to glue up stuff, but in case you don't, I'm using Tybone 3 so that it gives me a little bit of uh, time to glue both pieces. I'm just gonna sandwich them together, uh, one on top of the other here, and then the walnut. Um, I'm not gonna put, put glue in between the zebra wood and the walnut because these are two separate sticks. Um, otherwise they'd be stuck together but this is an easy way to save clamps and time also the tie bond 3 is water resistant so that's why i'm using that and there's my daughter throwing some gang signs man kids these days i tell you jana stop it i threw some additional clamps on there to make sure i had even pressure uh, pressure all throughout then i continued to glue the pieces for the handles And now I know these pieces still are very thick um, in comparison to what I need them to be. But once I take them out of clamps, I'll, um, I'll send them to the planer again and make sure I have uh, the thickness that I need. Again, more clamps. And while we wait for the glue to dry, uh, it's time to make the template. Um, I kind of drew this up uh, from watching some... Uh, uh, Pinterest pictures of what a walking cane should sort of look like and I know there's a lot of designs I like to try other designs in the future but this one was the the one that I thought would best fit my mom so this is the first time for me working with a template so I decided to make this one out of three quarter plywood and once the glue is dry it's time to take them off clamps at this point, I'm going to try to remove as much material as possible and get them as close to the template that I made. When you're cutting zebra wood, it smells like chicken poop or zebra wood. I don't know what it smells like. Poop. And when you're cutting walnut, smells like nuts. 
walnuts. I don't know if that's better. Okay. Now, once the glue was dry on the pieces for the handle, I sent it to the planer until I reached the desired thickness. This I did just by putting it next to the th uh, stick and uh, making sure it was the same thickness. Once I reached the desired thickness, then it was time to uh, continue on to the template. Um, like I said, I try to remove as much material as possible with whatever tools I have. I don't have a bandsaw, otherwise with the bandsaw it would have been much easier to uh, follow the outline of the uh, template staying on the outside of the line. But I did what I could with the jigsaw and the table saw and uh, everything that I have. Um, this is going to help me get as close to the outline as possible and then I'm gonna go with the router and trim off um, all the extra material. Another thing that I don't have is a router table so again doing what I can with what I have I'm gonna be using double-sided tape to stick to um, the surface of my workbench and then that I'm gonna clamp it to my workbench and follow along with the uh, handheld router. I also don't have an up cut down cut uh, flush trim router bit so I'm just gonna be using a normal uh, flush router bit with the down uh, bearing and um, with the bottom bearing and I'm just gonna take it really slowly because with this type of uh, router bed, it actually causes a lot of chip out. Um, I know with the up cut down cut bit uh, would have been much easier, but this is what I have. So this is what I'm gonna be using. Going very slowly, a little bit of material at a time, not taking too much off. And my plan was to, once I did one side, as you can see there, turn it around and do the other side, but I forgot to record it, but I did it. Um, now the bottom piece that's gonna be glued to the stick, it was a little uneven. So by putting it on my table saw sled, I was able to trim it off and make a flat surface to be glued to the stick. And I'm not showing you everything that I'm doing with both walking sticks because it's the same process. Anyway, um, I thought it was cool to add a little breakup uh, in between the handle and the stick. Um, this way it's going to be a little bit more appealing. On the one with the zebra wood and purple heart, I'm just going to do a piece of maple, I mean a, a piece of walnut. And on the uh, walnut and purple heart in the middle, I'm just going to turn around a little cut off of the purple heart and walnut. That way, the middle is facing the opposite way. And once the glue is dry, um, I went ahead and did the same process as I did before, uh, using double-sided tape to get a flat surface on the bottom, where I'm gonna be gluing it to the um, to the long stick. Now, there's a little piece towards the inner arch um, that is sticking out, as you can see there. So my plan is to just put a little bit of double-sided uh, tape on the bottom. And with the correct height on the blade, I'm just going to trim it off just enough to make sure I have a, um, an even surface, as you're going to see here. I realize when you're gluing little pieces like this, it's almost impossible to get them flush with each other. So you're going to have to do something to remediate it just using the tools you have. And once I have all the pieces prepared and ready, I'm going to be cutting a piece of metal to put in the middle um, as an anchor and to make it stronger and make sure it doesn't snap. and. The way I did it, I just cut a piece of anchor metal that I have laying around. Um, 
and using some mineral spirits I clean them off to make sure all the grease is off then I proceed to marking the very center of both pieces and I what I did I used the doweling jig without the inserts to make sure I have as close to a center drill as I possibly can I actually um, had ordered a drill press which would have been much easier but it was not here yet um, now it's here but I had done this already anyway this is what it's gonna be looking like inside and I did the same thing to the handle um, in order to create this now you might see that it's a little loose but it doesn't matter because once it's glued together I'm gonna put so much um, to part epoxy in there that um, it's gonna be filled and hardened and it's gonna create a perfect seal. Now you might see me here uh, spreading the uh, the epoxy all throughout but later I realized it's not necessary because all the squeeze out I mean I pretty much filled the holes as you can see here so with all that squeeze out I didn't need to do that. And once they were epoxied together, all there was left to do is clamp them in place. You don't need a lot of clamp pressure because it's epoxy, but you do need them to be straight. And like I said, gluing small pieces, it's pretty impossible to get them flush and straight and perfect. So like here, for example, I wanted to add a little more of uh, epoxy, but it had hardened so quickly and it's actually smoking if you can see it in the frame there so i just put a little more but um i don't think it was necessary after all i mean it was crazy though why it was smoking i have no idea if anybody knows please let me know in the comments i'm really interested to know why that happened i think it was because it was too much epoxy in one area but i have no idea i did a little bit of sanding to remove the epoxy and then cut it uh, to length. Um, now at this point I realized um, that the stick were uh, a little bit too thick and I wanted to create a little bit of a profile um, going down as you can see here. So using my tables, uh, I trimmed it off. Um, this uh, is gonna create a thicker profile at the top and thinner at the bottom. And this is gonna help me also when it's time to uh, put under the rubber legs at the bottom. So I did a little bit of uh, hand sanding and uh, went through all the grits uh, of sandpaper before cleaning the pieces with mineral spirits. This is gonna remove all the sawdust and actually gives you a chance to really appreciate what it's gonna look like in the end. And it's looking pretty good if I say so myself. Um, once I cleaned them off, I actually put them in the sun for a couple hours. And what, these, uh, what this does is brings back the color of the purple heart because it oxidates again, as you can see here. This is once it's dried out from the mineral spirits and it's been in the sun for a couple of hours. Now for my mom's walking cane, I wanted to do a little bit uh, of uh, an extra detail. Um, my mom is a very Catholic religious person. And what I'm gonna create for her is a rosary. If you don't know what a rosary is, it's pretty much um, the simple explanation that I can come up with is one Our Father to 10 Hail Marys. So on one side, I'm gonna be creating five Our Fathers because after every 10 Hail Marys, you say one Our Father. So on one side is gonna be five beads, which represent five Our Fathers. And on the other side is gonna be 10 beads, which is uh, representative of 10 Hail Marys. I know this is gonna mean a lot to my mom because she loves praying the rosary. Um, and now that your catechism class is complete, we continue to the drilling. Now with the Forstner bit, um, I did the holes to inset the beads a little bit. Um, if you don't know this trick, if you put it in reverse uh, before you actually drill, um, 
it'll help you reduce the chance of a tear out. And I did it with all these holes. And as you can see, I had no tear out at all on any of them. And after I did all the holes, um, I did the same process that I did with everything else. I used a little bit of two-part epoxy to glue them on there. Um, the friction fit, though, was almost perfect. So I probably didn't even need glue. Um, but just, just in case, I actually added a little bit and um, a little bit of um, uh, persuasion to get them in there. Um, they fit. Uh, they fit perfect on there. The bits that I use on this side, they're actually natural stones like quartz and I don't know what the other names are, but they're actually natural stones. So they look very, very nice. Um, on the other side, I just use artificial pearls. Um, and all of these, I just bought them at I think it was Joanne's craft store or something like that. Once I, uh, I was done with this, I actually liked the artificial pearls better than the natural stones. Um, once I did the finish, I actually liked them both, but I think I would have rather just doing both artificial pearls on both sides. Anyway, for the finishing process, I use Oris Oil Natural. Um, it's not the dark. Um, this is going to create a water barrier as well as a seal and gives it a little bit of sheen. Brings the natural look of the wood to surface. As you can see here, it's beautiful. It looks beautiful and smells good too. It tastes good too. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, anyway, look at this though. It looks beautiful. Actually, I feel like the camera doesn't do it justice as to how beautiful it looks in real life. Um, once I was done uh, applying Odis oil, I left it for about an hour and then I came back and uh, cleaned it all as best as I could. Um, with the orbital sander, I actually put a piece of rag on there and cleaned them up a little better and put some big rubber feet on there because it's actually to be used by my mom. It's not a showpiece case. Um, and it's very, very sturdy, it won't slip. Um, anyways, this is the final product. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you enjoy the process. If you liked it, please be sure to subscribe leave me a comment leave me a like and help me grow this channel guys and i really appreciate all your help and your support again i hope you guys liked it and until next time bye